Hello everyone. I would like to discuss something that went unexplained last time. When I changed these values to be double words and multiplied this index by 4, I did not change this name. Therefore, this instruction still reads just a single byte. It reads the first byte of the four bytes of a double word. And yet, it still seems to work correctly. To explain why is that, let's take a look at these double words in memory. So you can see here that the first byte of each double word is exactly the number that we need, which is the lowest the least significant byte of the entire 32-bit value. To make it even more obvious, let's try writing a value like this to memory. Let's execute this instruction. It has written the value here. And we can see that the first byte is the one that contains the least significant digits. And the highest digits are in the last byte. This is what makes x86 architecture little endian, which means that it stores numbers in memory starting from the little end. And little endianess also gives this architecture some nice symmetries. For example, if we store this number into a 32-bit register, then the lowest byte of this register is 78. So this is register AL. And when we store the same number into memory, then the lowest byte, 78, is also the very first byte at this address. Therefore, we can also write into this byte this way. And there is a nice analogy between the two. Another place where little endianess is useful is when we are numbering the bits. Let's rewrite this value as binary. x86 numbers the bits according to their corresponding power of 2, which is perhaps the most natural way to do it. So this is bit 0, this is bit 1, it corresponds to the first power of 2, and so on, this is bit 7. When we have a large number, for example 32-bit value, and we want to take a look at a specific bit, like, let's say, bit 17. Then little endianess allows us to very easily convert this into a number of bytes and bit within that byte, because 17 is 2 times 8 plus 1. So we skip two bytes and select a bit with number 1 in the third byte. So this is byte 2, bit 1, which is third byte and the second bit in the third byte. And now we may need to learn how to operate on specific bits. So let's try 
some simplest operations. First, OR instruction, which is a bitwise OR operation. The result of this operation is constructed in such way that a bit is set to 1 when there is 1 at this position in the first number or in the second number. So for example here we have 1 in the first number, here we have 1s in both, this is more than enough, and here we have 1 only in the second number, and here they are both 0 so the result also has zero here. This binary number should be 7e in hexadecimal, so let's verify it. Execute the OR instruction and the result is 7e in the AL register. We could say that this instruction merges bits from two numbers into one. And we can use this instruction, for example, to set an individual bit. Because this instruction is not going to change any higher bits of the AL register. And it is going to set the lowest bit to one no matter whether it was already set or not. And this instruction does exactly the same. It does not change any higher bits, only the lowest one. And the lowest bit of EIX is the same as the lowest bit of AL. And thanks to little NDNS, this works the same for memory. Therefore, these two instructions are equivalent. Next, we have AND instruction, which sets bits only in the positions where there is one in the first number and one in the second number. So, not here. Here we are going to have ones but not here, not here, and not here. This number is 38 in hexadecimal. Let's verify it. Execute the end instruction, and the result is 38. This instruction can be viewed as selecting some bits that interest us from the first number. So for example, when we end with just a single bit, like here, this instruction is going to zero all the upper bits of this register, except for the lowest one. So the result is going to be zero if the lowest bit in AL was not set, or 1 when the lowest bit was set. This instruction also updates the zero flag, so we can jump if the result is zero. And because we jump when the lowest bit was not set, this simply means that we check whether the number was even or odd because even numbers have lowest bit 0 and odd numbers have the lowest bit 1. So in this case the jump should not be taken because the number is odd so the result is going to be 1 not 0. And if we do the same for even a number, like 22, then this jump should be taken. Let's take a look.
first we have seven we end it with one the result is one jump is not taken then we have an even number so after the end instruction we get zero and jump is taken so we have detected that this was an even number and just like for the sub instruction we had CMP which does the same operation but it does not change the target register we also for end have test instruction which does the same operation as end but only updates flags so we can change this to use test instead of end let's test it we can see that the first jump is not taken and the second one is taken while the value of AL is not changed by the test instruction another case when we can combine end with jump if zero is when we end register with itself the result of such operation is the same number that was in AL but the zero flag is set when entire number was zero and is not set otherwise so this is an easy way of checking whether entire number is zero and of course we can also do it with test instruction you can sometimes see it done with or because it also does not change the number and zero flag is set only when the entire number is zero but test is perhaps the most clear so when we have a place in our program like this one when we check whether register is zero we can do it with test instruction like this and yes it is working finally let's mention XOR or exclusive R which is another bitwise operation and this one sets bits where there is one in the first number or in the second number but not in both so for example we are going to have one here but not here not where we have both ones this should be 44 in hexadecimal so let's give it a test yes the result is 44 as expected you can sometimes hear and be called bitwise multiplication and XOR be called bitwise addition and this is because when we operate just on single bits then AND is in fact the same as multiplication when both bits are 1 then the product is 1 times 1 and when any of them is 0 then the product is 0 so AND does in fact work like multiplication and XOR is like addition because the numbers wrap around so when we add 1 plus 1 we wrap back to 0 and because of this wrapping this is also the same as subtraction of bits 
because when we subtract 1 from 0, then we wrap back to 1. So we can check that this three operation have the same result when operating on single bits. And this also has a consequence that uh, you may sometimes see someone using a sub instruction like this to put zero into register because when we subtract number from itself of course you are getting zero and you can do the same with XOR because XOR is bitwise subtraction so this is also going to put zero into EAX register For example, we can use this here. We can zero EIX register, and when we want it to store zero on the stack, we can push EIX instead of zero. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.